himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Here in our readings. Now everyone grab your candles. I'm going to turn off the lights of the sanctuary. <coughs> Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and to whom he was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said unto them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told, to them, told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary tre treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord.
may be seated and extinguish your candles. That moment, that moment right there, when we turn off all the lights, have the candles lit, and we read the gospel by candlelight, is and always has been one of my favorite, favorite parts of the church here. There is just something special and holy about that moment. I think uh, my, my former professor, uh, David Lose, said it best when he wrote, there is a deepening of the silence that normally accompanies the reading of scripture, an increased attentiveness, an air of heightened expectation. Perhaps it is the solemnity of the evening as we gather candles in hand to celebrate the birth of the Christ child. Perhaps it is the weight of tradition, aware that we listen to passages Christians have heard for centuries. But perhaps it is also the breathtakingly simple yet surprisingly powerful story of a young girl giving birth to her first child, attended only by shepherds and stable animals, but heralded by angels above. By all rights, of course, it is a story that should not even have been noticed, let alone told again and again across millennium. After all, countless young girls gave birth that night, and we remember none of them. Interestingly, the smallness of Mary's story is set off by Luke's narrative setting. Luke declares, in those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus while Quirinus was governor. Emperors and governors are apt subjects for dramatic narratives. Unwed teenage mothers and their vulnerable babies are not. Yet, Luke locates this simple story amid the powers and principalities of the age to make a claim. A child born to this young mother will change the course of history and the fates of leaders and common folk alike hang in the balance of his destiny. I find it breathtakingly remarkable that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, King of Kings, God himself incarnate in man when he chooses to come into this world, he comes in the form of a baby, born to a young mother from an out-of-the-way town, born in a stable surrounded by shepherds and animals, born in complete and utter vulnerability, needing the love of his family and his community. It is so unexpected. Now, I know we all know this story. We've been hearing this story for years. And so when we think about the birth of Christ, this is where our mind goes. But I think if we really would think about it, if we had no idea about how this story goes, if someone were to ask us, how is God going to enter the world, I imagine most of our answers would have something to do with an all-powerful, conquering God riding in on a, on a white horse and saving the day. Not a little baby in need of his mother, a little baby unable to care for himself. And yet, when God, the King of Kings, enters this world, he chooses, he chooses vulnerability. It is a beautiful statement. It is a loving embrace of what it means to be human. Because you see, when, when Christ entered the world, Christ is not entering the world to conquer it. Christ is entering the world to save it. And in order to save it, Christ needs to live it. He needs to become human, fully human. And that means being vulnerable. That means struggles and pains sometimes. But it also means loves and joys. And Christ wants to know it all. Christ wants to experience everything it means 
to be a human being so that we can experience everything it means to live eternal. That is the beauty of Christ in our life, is that Christ comes time and time and time again in our vulnerabilities. Now, that doesn't mean that, that Christ doesn't come other times, right? Christ is there walking alongside of us hand in hand, walking with us through life both in highs and lows, through all, all places of life and all twists and turns that it takes us. But there's something special about those times when we are the most uncertain, when we are the most afraid, when we are the most vulnerable. I think it is because at those times we set our ego aside a little bit. We reach out. And in doing so, we're able to see more clearly the God who is with us, loving us every step of the way. God comes to us in our vulnerability and tells us and shows us that things are going to be okay, brings us peace. And I've seen this in the last, just recently here, even in, in town here. In the face of, of uncertainty and fear and feelings of vulnerability, our, our high school youth took it upon themselves to organize a prayer service every morning before school, inviting members of the community to come together instead of turning in, in on themselves when, when they're uncertain and when life gets scary, they instead reached out to one another and to all of us and it became something beautiful and special. I don't think I'll ever forget standing in that, in that gym next to Father Craig, <coughs> praying the Lord's Prayer with a bunch of high school kids standing there arm in arm. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And not too long ago, standing here, and I'm sure some of you were here as well, as we said goodbye. Said goodbye to, <clears throat> said goodbye to a little girl, way too early. And as we sat there in the sadness and the uncertainty of that moment, we watched as the sun broke through that window and just blew itself over that family, feeling the most vulnerable. And in that moment, feeling incredible peace. That is the message of Christmas. Not that God came to conquer the world, but that God came in vulnerability to reach out his hand to each and every one of us, asking us to join with him, to walk through this life and make a difference, changing the world one person at a time. That is the beauty of Christmas, is that Christ comes into this world with an outstretched hand looking for you. And some of you may say, no, now, I, I mean, that sounds great, but, but Christ isn't looking for me. I, my vulnerabilities are too great. I'm not the one Christ is looking for. I have no power. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not popular enough. I don't have a strong enough faith. God can't, uh, can't possibly be looking for me. I'm not worthy of that. I want you to take a moment and think about how Christ came into this world. Christ came into this world and reached out his hand to Mary, a young, unwed teenage mother who probably was scorned and looked down upon in her own uh, community for her condition. Christ reaches out her hand, his hand to Mary. Christ reaches out his hand to Joseph. I don't think we talk about Joseph enough. But a stepdad facing a really uncertain life. Not the, what he probably planned at all. But there, ready to do what he could. Christ comes into this world and he reaches his hand out to the shepherds. People who were away from society, kept away, way out in the wilderness, raising the sheep, 
They were the poorest and the least educated people of anyone in that society, the lowest rung you could get, and Christ reaches out his hand to them. And finally, a couple weeks later, when the wise men come, Christ reaches out his hand to foreigners who don't probably speak the same language and have different customs and culture. And then as Christ goes about his ministry time and time again, he reaches out his hands to the poor, to the misunderstood, to the ill, to the sinners. He reaches out his hand and says, come, walk with me. See what we can do together. And I know we all come here today with our own vulnerabilities, our own fears, our own feelings of uncertainty and, and, and vulnerabilities in the face of overwhelming, overwhelming struggles in life. Some of us are worried about money. Some of us are worried about relationships. Some of us are worried if we're going to make it in this life. Some of us are worried if we're ever going to find someone to love us the way we hope to be loved. Life is full of those moments of vulnerabilities. It's full of wonderful joys too, but it is full of struggles and vulnerabilities. And the good news of Christmas morn, the good news of Christ coming into the world, is that Christ knows those vulnerabilities. He knows your fears and your uncertainties and your worries and your doubts. And he reaches out to you says, take my hand, walk this world with me. Let's make a difference. You may not believe it, but each and every one of you are exactly who Christ came into this world to be with. No matter who you are, where life has taken you, Christ has come into this world to take your hand because you are a beloved child of God. And Christ sees you, and he knows you, and he knows every single part of you, and he is not turning away because of that. He's reaching out to you and saying, you are exactly who I need. So when life gets twisty and turning and, and feels uncertain and fearful, and you feel incredibly vulnerable, know this. You are not alone. Christ is reaching his hand out to you. Go ahead and take it. Walk along that journey with Christ and together change the world. Amen. Our hymn today is What Child Is This? Number 296, or as projected. <laughs>